today's topic was banted around a little bit over the last week and I thought I'd bring it up and that's risk assessment and recognizing actual risk versus perceived risk. So one of the biggest pieces that I'm looking at right now with this current situation with the coronavirus is that the biggest risk is in people's behaviors. Right now that overshadows by far the actual risk of getting the virus and perishing. Um, there are demographics, of course, to consider and there's locations to consider, but this growing tension based on news coverage and the way it's being covered of the global pandemic, the global pandemics, they're not new and they sweep through, they do their job and they disappear. Okay, think smart. So let's run down the, the systems you need to really be worried about. First, it's not that you're misinformed or uninformed if you're aware that there's a virus going around that is pretty virulent, powerful, um, airborne, easy to catch, and that our best efforts, which is a good insight into the actual power of government and effectiveness of government around the world, best experts globally are not being able to stop its spread. That's nothing to get panicked about if you look at your immediate landscape and you are taking care of business. So map your most commonly tracked areas. What is your contact with those doorknobs, right? What is your contact with shared bathroom spaces? What is your contact with people as you speak to them? Do you, do you keep enough distance, right? The, the whole social distancing thing is more than um, what we're used to. Get used to being friendly, but at 16 feet away. You don't have to be a recluse. This is a good time to get your yard work done. You know, self-imposed isolation for longer periods of time than you're used to isn't it isn't a jail sentence it's a good excuse to start shoring up your house and making sure you have redundancy in your systems so actual risk will impact your awareness and the rest of your attitude your ability to have a safe functioning meaning it protects you from the elements and allows you sound sleep and secure shelter will make sure you have redundant systems in water, whether it's a spring and a generator to run the pump and water catchment. These are things that are going to alleviate life-threatening concerns because these are all life-sustaining systems. Fire is another one. Well, let's say things get Hollywood bad, CNN news bad, globally. Who's going to maintain the power? Who's going to go around and check meters? How long is that system gonna be up and running? And do you really wanna put all of your chips on that bet? Generators are plentiful for now. Those systems are important. Food, everyone puts food at the top of the list, folks. It's the last priority. You know, people joke about long pig, but it's going to be three to six months before you go all cannibalistic in some places. And there's enough excess calories right now on the landscape. Just be wise. Do you really want to eat Kraft macaroni and cheese for the next three to six months or predetermined time until you run out of that? Besides, doesn't it require heat? and water uh oh so look at a menu rotation through two weeks at a time and for whatever time you think you want to store food don't store it so much as rotate your stock once you get your your stock levels up 
Again, when you have systems and they're redundant and you're secure in your systems, then these things, when they come, aren't going to be a, a major stressor in your life. They're not even going to be a primary focus except that you need to address your systems. When your systems are on lockdown, you have sanitation on all of the high traffic areas. That's one. You have um, a secure, safe place to sleep well. That's your shelter. That's two. You have fire in the form of heat and light, whether it's lanterns and candles and a wood stove and a rocket stove in the backyard, even a barbecue. Get your propane tanks filled. Now you have a place to cook and sterilize water, right? That's the three, it's water, right? Let me make sure I got them all. Attitude, shelter, yeah, fire, water is four, sorry. When you're boiling your water and storing it, which you should do, you make sure you have at least two days ahead in case something happens. Maybe you're um, busy working on a project or repairing something or installing a new row in the garden and you just didn't have the time that day. It's good to have a buffer. Two full days of water minimum stored. And again, rotate the stock with your containers. Um, have redundancy and filtration systems. Hand pumps are nice. Those big bag family filters are great. Problem with pumps and filters is their filters need to be changed or there's moving parts that eventually wear. Gaskets go bad. So those little Halzone and bleach tablets, as awful as they taste, get some powdered drink mix to add to it to make sure everyone's getting enough fluids. All of these things, think them through against your lifestyle and the environment you've chosen to live in, your home, and then start adjusting in a manner that doesn't disrupt the flow of your life as much because then you're not going to use those systems. You want to make sure that they're readily available and they're sequenced so that they're used when needed. The first thing that's going to happen after hypothermia and, um, and exposure-related elements is sanitation, bad water can't drink it, that you're gonna create more problems for yourself regarding um, dehydration, purging out both ends and hypovolemic shock, which leads to death if it's not tended to. There's, and, and you're contaminating everybody else with your own body fluids when that happens. So let's avoid all that. Let's avoid all that and get to a place where you're really good, your foundation is strong and you can be of help to the people you care about instead of a burden in really hard times. It's not only empowering, um, it, it gives clarity of purpose to your existence. It, it's hard work, it's real. See you on the trail.